Hey, welcome back everyone. I'm John Furrier here in the Palo Alto Studio for a special presentation, Broadcom VMware, VMware Cloud Foundation, Explore and Transform. We're here discussing Paul Turner, Vice President of Product at VCF Division of Broadcom. Paul, great to see you. Thanks for coming on this special presentation. John, hey, great to be here and delighted. So obviously VMware, now Broadcom, and you're on the VCF division, VMware Cloud Foundation. It is the crown jewel of the, all the core VMware product that's been operating you know, enterprises for decades. Um, now with this new wave here, a lot's changed. Take us through the update on mid-year review. We've got Explore coming up around the corner. Give us a quick update on the division, how things are going, how the product mix is. Give us a quick update. Well, I think a, a really exciting thing is we're actually, yeah, finally, I think, delivering on what we want for customers which is to deliver a full private cloud experience or a cloud experience to those customers. And that means that we've taken, to, to deliver a cloud, you need to deliver virtualized infrastructure. We're great at that with vSphere. You need to deliver virtualized networking. We're great at that with NSX. You need to deliver virtualized storage, which we are great at with virtual, uh, with vSAN. And we need to integrate those products and make them work, make them easy and life cycle the products and allow the customers to run them at scale. And what we did is we took all of those groups within VMware, and we said build it, bring them together, bring the teams together, execute in a plan, and really deliver an integrated private cloud experience. So that's what we've done, it's been a very exciting time, it's amazing to see the change in terms of the, the product management excitement, the engineering excitement internally as we go and deliver what we want to for customers. You know, I love when I talk to VP of product because you have the keys to the kingdom, and with all this effort going on and with the acquisition, everyone wants to know what's changed. What's the biggest change? If you can boil that down, what is the biggest change since the Broadcom acquisition on the product and VCF as a, as a whole? So I think the biggest change is when you, when you look at, at running this as a kind of integrated offering, you can actually make the product much more interesting. You can change completely the way we do networking. To actually say, like, networking should just always be there. Like, how can I make it as easy as VPCs up in the cloud? We already showed that. We've gone and built that into our VCF product. You've got the ability to build VPCs directly into the product, to be able to kind of carve up and build tenancy into the product. So you've got this amazing ability as you bring products together and you can build, you build, you make the automation and the management of the platform much more easy to integrate, lifecycle manage and update and patch so that your operators who are trying to run your infrastructure can run it at scale. So you can start small, you can run up at large scale, but all of that lifecycle management can be built in. So what we did is, what's changed is bringing those teams together means we can actually deliver on a private cloud for customers that's secure, that's resilient, that's operator friendly, and importantly can support your applications. We also bring in, of course, uh, Kubernetes based applications and you can run entire Kubernetes infrastructure at enterprise scale. We're in this release that we've just announced, uh, that's the good news. This release, we're bringing out a new um, a Kubernetes offering where we keep updating Kubernetes as fast as you need to. So we do that by, by updating in terms of the cloud offering. Yeah, Paul, I love chatting with you because you know, just, <laughs> it just conjures up memories from a decade ago. We've been doing the Cube for 14 years. Yeah. I remember when Wikibon, now the Cube Research, did a, a, a study, what's the first research study on the private cloud? Uh -huh. That was pre-Amazon scaling up their revenue and pre-public cloud, pre-Kubernetes, by the way. OpenStack right. was the rage then. Um, that was mainly a data center kind of play. VMware, again, still dominant at that time and right. continues to dominate in the large enterprise. So much has changed since then, right? So now you got public cloud grew, now we're kind of next gen public cloud, but we're basically it's distributed computing. Mm -hmm. Bring the gen AI era now, you got a completely now new infrastructure changeover at the hardware level, you got clustered systems, everything now is speaking large scale because the apps are evolving. Mm -hmm. Kubernetes enabled that orchestration for cloud native, that's causing a lot of growth and open source. So everything's popping on all cylinders, developers, and now infrastructure needs to ride that with it and the software behind it has to go. So given that backdrop, I can see the, why you guys did this because you had a lot of large customers. V VCF had the networking, it's got the storage, it's got the compute, it's right. got the applications, it's got the hypervisors, it's got the virtualization. What's next? Where does it go from here? What does the portfolio look like? How do you guys create that headroom and future proof? Because this is the conversation everyone wants to know. Will it be ready? for this next gen wave. Yeah, so it, it absolutely will be ready. I'll, I, 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 you always think of like three <laughs> things, right? Uh, in, yeah. in, terms of, in terms of uh, product management and planning, it's actually very important that we kind of think like, what's the big three areas that we're kind of investing in? Those three areas are around, how do I help your operators run at scale? 
really important. Like, we've got to be able to run this infrastructure. Infrastructure is code. I've got to be able to run it, scale it, fleet manage it, operate it, do patching, yeah. all of that life cycle. I have to do that. I have to deliver also the most secure, resilient infrastructure, whether it's running in your data center, whether it's running in one of our hyperscaler partners, whether it's running in our CSP partners. This will be the most resilient, trusted infrastructure that you can operate at scale. So all of that is, is second key area. The third, of course, though, and, and this is the most important one, this is why you need to kind of move mm -hmm. from just virtualization to a cloud infrastructure, is all about agility. Because as you just mentioned, you're delivering new types of applications, Gen AI applications, different database services that you mm -hmm. need to deploy. Application owners want to actually deliver DevOps and agile applications. How do they do that properly? They do that by delivering infrastructure as code and an agile infrastructure. So to do that, you've got a platform that is not just a virtualization platform, it's all of the Kubernetes platform, it's containers or VMs managed through Kubernetes, as agile as you want, supporting private AI, and I think we mentioned that earlier, yeah. of, of our Gen AI work that we've yeah. done, and we'll continue to expand out the different service offerings. You know, it's interesting, the old school days, you know, you roll out stuff to the enterprise, they'd buy it and then deploy it, and you run it, you run, you run operations, you invest in it, you run ops and do new things. Now every enterprise is different. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder in the sense that each enterprise will have a different model stack. They might have a different compute architecture. They might rethink how their edge looks. It's, it's kind of the same, but they're all different. So mm -hmm. agile and the ability to roll out really strong infrastructure as a critical system yeah. has always been the sweet spot for VMware. You've always been mission critical infrastructure and software. Yeah. Got it. What does that mean in this next wave? And you, from a product standpoint, what's the guiding principles? What are your first principles as you look at this product? How do you ensure that? Take us through the portfolio. Some things will stay the same. We are going to have a virtualized platform that will support all of your compute offerings, your different type of storage offerings. What's in your data center will be virtualized, supported by us, and we're going to bring a private cloud experience to that customer and to all of our customers out there, more than 300,000 customers. So some things stay the same. Yeah. The things that become different are how do we actually deliver a full private cloud? If you're going to AWS, what you're getting is you can dynamically get applications deployed in a matter of moments. And the reason why you can do that is because you get dynamic virtualized compute, virtualized storage, virtualized networking. The management for you is automatically done. That's what you need to do for our, and that's what we do for our customers. So VCF, our VMware Cloud Foundation, is the basis for that. We deliver it a private cloud to our customers and to our enterprises. And it means we can do really mm -hmm. smart things. It means I can, I can now actually, as I provision, I can dynamically provision the right amount of storage for you. I can dynamically, all by policy, policy-based provisioning of storage, policy-based provisioning of networking. So I do that basically a YAML spec that actually defines what I want. I've yeah. speeded into our Kubernetes engine, automatically get the application deployed. That's the way yeah. cloud infrastructure needs to be. And that's what we're doing with VCF. All fully dynamic, it'll be multi-tenanted in the platform as well. So not just VPC level tenancy where I can do isolated networks, but isolation to a tenant so that each tenant you can do chargeback, you can do cost awareness depending on what your customer wants. All of that tied directly into the product. Yeah, and it's nice because you get the cloud operations on premise in the enterprise, full control. You got the control point there and the data's key. Can you share some of the customer use cases and the value proposition that you're seeing with them? How are they adopting it? How are they leveraging the agility? Can you, can you take us through some customer uh, specific situations? Yeah, sure. So uh, 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 I, like, I like kind of, recently we've actually come out with an edge-based offering as well, right? With a VCF edge, uh, so that we, because certain customers have different deployment sizes, deployment types. But edge is kind of an unusual one. What you'd like to be able to do is define a spec for your, your applications that I deploy. I've got thousands and thousands of these edges. These edges should be able to wake up, kind of pop back to the Git server, find out what its image is, pull it down, automatically run the latest application. And every time there's a new application, it becomes more self-aware. So that kind of is a dynamic change, but we can do it because I've got dynamic storage, I've got dynamic networking, I've got dynamic virtualization and compute, and we can do it all through a managed offering, and we built Kubernetes in that gives us this kind of mm -hmm. agility. So it's, it's changing, and that's just a, an edge use case. The traditional data center use case, look, our customers, they are, looking for how do they operate at scale. They are cost managed, they are running big data centers, everything is about efficiency. 
we have people yeah. running hundreds of thousands of servers. And those hundreds of thousands of servers, they need to run scale. What's different is we are bringing with DCF full fleet management capability for customers so they can actually manage patch, update, lifecycle. They can make sure that their infrastructure is secure. They can do configuration management to be compliant to certain requirements, if it's financial yeah. requirements or other. So all built into the platform. So lots of different use cases. I mean, it's a new era in private cloud innovation and value. And, and, and your point about the edge is interesting because some people are, are have a lot of active edge activities and the ones that kind of have this new era in private cloud, a hybrid and now cloud, will want to expand on the edge as device to core happens. That's coming too. So that factors into the product, the extensibility and headroom to manage the edge. What's the, what's the story there for customers who are saying, hey, I gotta, I'm, I'm, I'm shoring up my, my base here, I got my private cloud, the new era's here, I got cloud operations, I love my Kubernetes, got my cloud native, I got my developers cranking out apps. Now the next level, I got to get to the edge. That's yeah. my next to-do item. Now they probably have some edge, but it might not be as yeah. robust. What's your story there? Well, actually we're already in the edge. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's, <laughs> not, it's not a new space for us. I think a lot of what we have to do for edge is, is look at the right kind of price models for the edge. But we also, we're already there. So uh, if you look at any of the biggest retailers, uh, you know, in, in the US, any of the biggest retailers in Europe, any of the manufacturing plants, all of those run our infrastructure. In, in their case, it is pretty similar to the data center. A lot of it is this need for the data center and the edge both need to be able to lifecycle manage and fleet operate our infrastructure at scale. Infrastructure needs to be updatable at scale. But they also need to be able to do application deployment and delivery at scale. The data center also needs to do that. That's what Kubernetes is about, DevOps and the way that people want to deliver applications. So it's funny, there's a lot of affinity to what edge needs and what data center needs. And both of them need a modern, agile way for developers to be able to deliver applications and deliver onto a platform. We do that with inbuilt Kubernetes within the platform, and, we can, and it can allow us to deliver into the data center better, and you can define the entire spec of the infrastructure that you need, or into the edge. And then you also need to be able to operate at scale, which means you need to have a, 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 and a way to fleet manage better, and then of course the third thing I, I will just say is mm. the, this has to be secure. Yeah. At the edge, you're probably even more concerned about it, well not any more concerned than the data center. Data center people <laughs> are very worried about it right now. It's all concerned, the but service area is huge. Yeah, we can do everything from being able to build a highly trusted secure platform to if things go horribly, you know, can I say our ways? You know, <laughs> yeah, if they, yeah, if they really can. go ugly, <laughs> yeah. then we can ransomware recover for you. We yeah. can actually just roll back Security time is critical. and bring you back. So just to be clear, you, you are already at the edge. For customers that need to expand out to the edge once they get all their data center working done in the new era yeah. of private cloud, they're there for it with VCF today. Yep. So that's something that's a clearly on the execution roadmap they yep. can deliver. Yep. So that's part of the package. Okay, so what's the key drivers for you right now? As you look at the product roadmap, we've got Explore coming up. I'm sure you don't want to reveal some of the jewels you're going to talk about at the, at the event. What's the key priorities for you on the roadmap? As you look at the changing marketplace, what are your priorities? What's the focus? So, so some of it is kind of boring, uh, honestly. It's, <laughs> we like um, boring. <laughs> it's, um, it's, uh, I, I tell my product managers that integration is a feature. And, and that sounds daft, uh, but we have the leading products already. We've got the leading storage products, networking products, virtualization of compute products, the management products, the logging products, the analytics that you need to do across an infrastructure. But we have not done the best job for our customers on integrating those products well together. And, and that's where we're focusing. We're putting an awful lot into how should this operate? Because if you think about it, I deploy a virtualization and I've got templates there. Yeah. Those templates, I should be able to bring in an automation infrastructure and and my automation infrastructure can automatically recognize that, create actually a content library, make it available out to your customers, organize them into tenants so that yeah. they, they can do chargeback and it shows up in the operations console. It, the logging and everything that users are doing is logged so that I get authenticatable logs that I can even feed off into yeah. Splunk and other things. It's, it's integration is a feature. And that's the biggest change that you're seeing us do is we can, we have the assets, we have the right features, we have the, it's not about net new features, there, there is cool new things we're building. Of uh, um, but, 
but integration, I'd say, is, is Well, it's interesting, of... integration is key, key for automation, right? I mean, it's funny about boring, because we always say that Kubernetes is getting boring, but that's a feature, not a bug, because you want it to be boring. Yes. Linux is boring, yeah. it runs things. Yeah. So boring means it's operating, it's good. Hey, boring means it's nothing, <laughs> all good. Integration becomes critical, because now you're looking at automation, and interoperability becomes a factor, as you have a large ecosystem developing and changing. Yeah. You have API economy, where everything's going to be, all traffic's 85% through APIs, and yeah. growing. So you got a connective tissue, you got neural networks now, changing some of the data modeling. Infrastructure, data, apps will all be the same stack. It's still middleware, it's still infrastructure, it's still applications. This is important, the integration is hugely important. Once getting that right, boring means reliable, right? <laughs> boring means reliable, boring means predictable, it means um, uh, uh, descriptive infrastructure too. It's infrastructure that I can actually set a template and say this is how I want it to actually deploy, is how I'm going to deploy my application, it's how infrastructure needs to get. Yeah. The reason why we're build, we built Kubernetes in is for exactly yeah. that. So it, it, by having well-defined cloud infrastructure, by having uh, well, well, have that built in as and and delivered as part of a, an agile interface for mm -hmm. the developers, it means we can change the way we deliver applications. We can deliver them faster, quicker. We can move at the speed of business, and and that's a big change. As your customers continue to, to grow and change and evolve and transform, um, they're going to want to have a partner to, to grow with. Obviously, VMware is a key partner. Mm -hmm. What is your vision? for VCF division on the product side for customers. If I asked you, Paul, tell me the vision. Give me the 25 mile stair, North Star. What's the vision? Where, where are you going to take your customers? What, what, how would you respond to that? So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a, a competitor, uh, <laughs> which sounds like an odd thing to do, but I'm, I'm telling you what we are very focused on is we're going to give you the ability and simplicity and agility that you get from the AWS cloud and we're going to give it to you in your data center or in any of our service provider or hyperscaler data centers that we deploy on. We are going to be the best distributed cloud offering that can run across any infrastructure, your private cloud data center, it's a secure private cloud data center, or our hyperscaler partners or our cloud service provider partners as we now call our VCPP program. But it's the same infrastructure. It means that you can now trust it in the way that you deliver applications to it is open. It's mm -hmm. Kubernetes based applications or open APIs that we provide, um, but it's the same. So that means that I can actually decide, hey, I'm running in my data center today. No, maybe I won't run in my data center. Maybe I'll use one of our service provider partners. And you can see that we are one of the most distributed and available clouds out there. Yeah. And so you get the same cloud experience. You get a trusted, secure, resilient. It is a confidential infrastructure that you can run on. Uh, and you have this agility. And, and I just pick on the Kubernetes one as an example because it just shows that we really are consciously looking at keeping this as yeah. an open platform for developers too so that they can deliver. And we do a couple of things nice with the Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a bit of a, I'll, I'll use another pain in the ass to manage. Yeah but it is for many customers. Yeah, got to make that we easier. Automate the whole thing. We, you'll have failed nodes, we bring them back up, yeah. you, it's yeah. multi-mastered, we do it all for the customer, so the customer just needs to decide, yep, I actually yeah. want that agile interface for my developers. And I love the AWS vision because it's, it's speed, it's agility, it's, it's abstract away the heavy lifting, automation, and cost are managed, elastic, all good. Question is, okay, what's the, what's the requirements for the customer and what's their benefit? Because obviously public cloud is an option here, it's private. What are the drivers, what are the requirements, so, what are so the benefits? That, that's why you see security as a key one for us. Because what we do definitely see is, we get the agility and we benchmark ourselves against, let's get AWS level of agility for you. Um, but secure, privacy, trusted, we need to be the most secure platform to run on, and we bet, yeah. we bet on that. And we bet on that with our customers, and our customers are the biggest banks in the world. Yeah. They're the biggest armies in the world. Any, any of the critical infrastructure is running on us. Yeah. And some of the smaller companies, you can say even smaller ones that are just little insurance companies, or uh, they are just as critical, their infrastructure is as critical to them. So, what we want to do is deliver the agility that you want with the cloud, with the security and trust that you get from VMware, uh, now VMware by Borodcom, 
that is staying. The Paul, same. that's a great vision. And I got to say, one of the things about the uh, enterprise technology estates is that's changing and it's codifying their enterprise, entire enterprise, into digital. Right. And that's not just digital transformation from five years ago, it's changed a lot because that confidential, that security, that data, they got to manage that. So it's time for them to step up and roll out their own, and you, we're seeing this now at scale. Just scope the order of magnitude of en enterprises that are leaning into this level of changeover. Uh, like what percentage would you say are, you mentioned some big banks, is it just the big, the big guys and the big players or is it everybody? Oh, absolutely not. We're, we're seeing this uh, uh, across the board, right? So this is, it's, a, it's actually a really exciting time because we're, we're seeing, uh, we've, we just did a, an exec road show, went out and met with about 400 top customers. I mean, uh, the enthusiasm from our customers is, is actually exciting. It's something that you can feed off, but it's not just the top 1,000 yeah. or 10,000 customers that will take advantage of it. It's many, many beyond that. Yeah. And even those, those smaller customers, we're gonna deliver that great agile experience for them. We have both VCF, Cloud Foundation, and we have our vSphere Foundation. So if all you want is virtualized infrastructure, you still get yeah, that from yeah. us. We deliver that base virtualized infrastructure. So you can choose, I want a cloud infrastructure, I want a base virtualized infrastructure. But, but both are available. So we're, we're going to deliver for all of our customers. Um, and we see, we, we see enterprises replatforming the Cube Research team <laughs> seeing that uh, clearly. And it's you know, a lot of catalysts on that, very key. Paul, exciting to have you on. Um, you know, you've been in the industry for a while, you've seen many cycles. You said it's an exciting time. How would you categorize this um, wave we're on? Because it's like all the theaters are, are, are exploding in value, change over, disruptive innovation, disruptive enablements happening. We're in a platforms, we're in a systems era. You're starting to see people think about systems, not just buying stuff. And so there's a benefit for, uh, a TCO benefit for looking at this. And then people are confused by that. So you look at this wave, talk about from a personal standpoint, how you see it. And the, the benefits go beyond just what the costs are. There's a total cost of ownership. What's your thoughts? Yeah, so I think, I think what's interesting about the IT industry overall is that we, we learn from each other. We're always out innovating. That's what, that's what IT is all about, right? So AWS comes out and shows us a different way of doing a complete new automated cloud infrastructure. Yeah, gosh, we, we, <laughs> we virtualized something first. We hadn't done the full virtualized data center, but they went and showed us yeah. what's possible. Um, but then we will bring back that, that and out innovate them in terms of the platform and bring something that the customers want. Give me secure, private, uh, uh, trusted, and cost managed and controlled. Because one of the challenges with an AWS cloud, an Azure cloud, a Google cloud, and they are great partners with us yeah. as well. But one of the challenges is cost management of those environments. And what we find is we can actually yeah. run a better cost infrastructure for our customers in their data center mm -hmm. uh, frequently or with our service provider partners because we do cool things like yeah. over provisioning on infrastructure and, and let the IT people really manage and optimize the infrastructure. So that level of thing, I think you're seeing a rebalance here. Yeah. Yeah. We're innovate, out innovating each other. You're seeing a rebalance where you're going to see a kind of true multi-cloud yeah. where multi-cloud does not mean that I somehow do applications that span yeah. clouds. It just means I'll be doing clouds in balance. I'll have my level of cloud providers that I have. I'll have my private data center environments that I'll have. Yeah. And we think that the right way to manage that then should be that you actually have a common cloud management stack. Yeah. And, and that is VCF. It's interesting, we're driving back to heter heterogeneous systems. You know, let the yeah. customers choose. Multi-vendor used to call it back in the day. Absolutely. I remember when that, back in the old days, oh, multi-vendor, now multi-cloud, super cloud, heterogeneous, open, let the customers choose. Right, and make it easy. You know, we built into our VCF stuff, we build in things like dynamic migration tools so that they can actually move applications around. We built our licenses so that our licenses can be deployed anywhere. So give customers that choice. You know, they got an operating environment that they can run at scale in their data center. They've got the ability to run through any of our service provider partners or hyperscaler partners, give them the ease and ability yeah. to move. 
and yeah, you kind of will we'll continue. <laughs> Where's the next innovation going? I don't Paul, know. that's great stuff. Love this market right now. But you got big news. It's launch week for VCF 5.2. Give us the update, what's happening, what's the hot take, what's the big news? Yeah, so I think the, the great thing is we have not stopped. We are out there innovating right now, and 5.2 is the first of our big releases, actually, since, uh, since the Broadcom acquisition. So we built something really cool, I love it. Uh, it's called ESX Live Patch. The ability for us to, without any maintenance mode, automatically update for any critical security issues. So those kind of things are very big difference. We brought fleet management capabilities. So if you think like an admin, how do I actually run at scale? Uh, so how can I? How we do that is we take our VCF management, which is something called SDDC Manager. We're able to import in existing environments and actually bring all the value of that fleet management, which does pre-planning of an environment, automating the fleet and lifecycle upgrade of all of the components for the customer. So we bring that into the 5.2 release. We've uh, enhanced our vSAM Max capability. So we brought in new management capability for vSAM Max and our ESA, which was our new type of storage architecture that we built, uh, you know, using, using solid state. So that new architecture we can now run across stretch cluster environments, which a lot of our big customers, a lot of European customers, a lot of big enterprises use. So we keep innovating in the core. One of the ones, again, I'm most excited about is uh, on the Kubernetes side, We've actually taken our Kubernetes, right, our, our vSphere integrated Kubernetes stack, and we are now able to keep that up to date with uh, the Kubernetes runtimes that are out there. So much more agile kind of releases of that. And it means that customers, the default choice for customers who are running vSphere should be just use the Kubernetes that's there because it is open source compliant, it is up to date, it is secure, it's trusted, it gives you all of the things you want and you can do VM as a service, it's called a VM service, so manage VMs through it or containers through it, all in an agile way. So all of that is bundled into this release. It's also, of course, we, we've enhanced further our VPC capability in for NSX. So we launched that about a year ago. We've enhanced that one further so that you actually get the ability to truly slice and operate infrastructure in a better way. So, so tons of things I could keep going, but it's the it's team's been working hard. Exciting. Oh, they've been working. That's a big refresh. Yeah, huge. What is it? Bottom line, what does it all mean? Is there one thing that? What bumper sticker would you say? What is? Was there one thing that jumps out at you in this? What is this release? If you had to kind of put a headline on this release, what would it? What would it be? I I think our biggest focus here has been helping customers manage at scale and move to our full stack in an easier, easier fashion. And to do that, what we're doing is fleet management and uh, what we call brownfield, which is a terrible term for it. Yeah. But effectively what it means is, how do we bring in existing environments? How do we make it easier for them to adopt VCF? And what they get for that is value. They get fleet management, they get scale, and then they can bring on, as they need to, bring on extra capability set in an easier fashion because life cycle's not difficult anymore, patching's not difficult. So it's really about the operator and the admin team and how do we make it simple for them to operate at scale better? That's where our focus is. VMware Cloud Foundation continues to be that transformation yes. enabler, accelerating the next level, next level value for cloud, private cloud. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Paul, great to have you on. Thanks for clarifying the, the mid-year review on VCF, VMware Cloud Division, that you run the, you're the keys to the kingdom on the product side. A lot of change in a positive way. Um, we're going to do a big TCO on this. We're going to help continue with the Cube Research to yeah. look at this because this system architecture is changing everything. It's the impacts are multifold. But thanks for coming and sharing. Congratulations, got a platform, a new era in private cloud, a new era yes. innovation. I'm John Furrier with the Cube. We'll be back with more coverage after this short break.